Hi there, I'm Jen. This is Remembered Reads, and this is not exactly going to be the C tag, which was created by Jim from books, reading, and stuff. I keep wanting to do the gesture that he does at the opening of his videos. That is a whole tag with a bunch of questions, but one of the questions in there was him mentioning that he doesn't understand the appeal of comic, and can someone explain that to him? And I said in the comments there that it seemed like an an invitation to name Scott McCloud's understanding comics, which he said he didn't have in mind in response. So I thought I would make a video just answering that one prompt, uh, rather than naming the last books I read from Country, starting with the letter C, because I think that's kind of a bit of an interesting question, and I've had a few people ask uh, where to start with things. So yes, my general answer to that is if you don't understand comics, especially if you read them and you're reading the word bubbles, but you don't really know how to read the pictures in a way that it engages with you. And again, this is assuming you have the visual acuity and visual processing ability to read sequential art, right? That everything's predicated on the fact that you can see the art and follow it. Assuming that you do, Scott McCloud's understanding comics essentially explains how to read comics in part and gives a history of uh, the evolution of comics as a form. It's very focused on the Anglo-American tradition, although it does mention the Franco-Belgian and Japanese traditions. But I think the issue of not knowing how to read comics is much more common in the Anglosphere than it would be in the Francosphere or in the Japanese market. And similarly in countries that are influenced by the French or the Japanese style, like the Korean comics market or the Spanish comics market, etc. So yes, if you are completely baffled by how to read comics, and if you find yourself reading the words and finishing something in 10 minutes and 15 minutes and wondering what the big deal is, if you're reading that quickly, you're probably not reading the pictures. And I would suggest picking up Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics because that guide might help you. If you're just baffled by the idea of sequential art, I would ask, do you enjoy visual art? Some people don't, and fair enough, it may not be for you. But if you do, Surely you can appreciate the combination of both words and pictures. Because I think the whole idea with comics is, uh, it's kind of like the cliche that a picture is worth a thousand words. You could describe, for example, a fight scene like we have here in The Master Chocolatier. But in a comic, you could create the same kind of story that you would have in a, say, 250 page novel in, 50, in a 54 page album because you don't have to describe everything, the illustrations are doing a lot of the work for you. They're capturing the movement, they're capturing the descriptions of characters, of people, of places. You don't have to describe every building in the Grand Place to look at this illustration of the main character walking through the Grand Place, for example. Similarly, in What Did You Eat Yesterday, which is a cuisine book, this is a book that includes recipes. In a recipe book, you would have to describe in greater detail some of the things that you can show in imagery in a comic. So, and lest you think that's lazy, in a traditional cookbook you would have photos most of the time too. You don't generally just have a recipe without anything else. On the nonfiction side, I think if you're interested in why nonfiction comics are especially powerful, I think the introduction to Joe, to Joe Sacco's journalism gets into that. I talked about this a bit when I did a video specifically about comics journalism, which I'll link to below, but one of the things that he brings up in here is that because a comics journalist has to draw what he's seen and is essentially editing in a way that a photojournalist wouldn't do, but also picking and choosing the amount of information to share more so than a print journalist was. His example in here is that if, for example, he's showing an ambulance to carry someone away, a print journalist would just say this person was taken away by ambulance, but he has to decide how he's going to draw the ambulance, how he's going to draw the people being carried away, and so on and so forth, all of which creates a different imagery and uh, gives you a certain amount of extra information that the print journalist wouldn't have because they're just giving the simple, they were carried away by ambulance. So there is essentially far more information being portrayed in two pages here than there would be in a couple of pages in, of print journalism or of photojournalism. But again, if the issue is you just didn't grow up with comics, I cannot speak highly enough of Scott McCloud's understanding comics, because I do think it is a shame that for people who grew up in kind of anglophone publishing, there just wasn't enough variety of comics available until relatively recently. I think for people who are under the age of, say, 25 or so, 
they've had more access. And for obviously older people who grew up with Japanese or Francophone books, that's different. I mean, I have comics here that my grandparents bought, and if they were alive, they'd be 110 years old. So <laughs> obviously, uh, that's a little different. But I do think it's a shame that in the Anglo American market, it has been so limited to genre products for such a long time. That wasn't always the case, and if you go back 90 years, there was a lot more variety, but we did have a good 70 years in which American comics tended to be superhero books and British comics tended to be things like Judge Dredd, and it is so limited compared to other comics markets globally and what's available now. So I understand where people are coming from when they weren't, if they weren't interested in those specific genres, and so they just didn't bother reading them and are now looking at translated work or the newer, broader selection of comics and wondering what's the point and or where to start. Understanding comics is a great place to start. It's a little older now, so I don't think the references are 100% up to date, but I still think it's a fantastic guide that explains, as I said, how to read the pictures. Because I do think a lot of people who don't think they understand, who don't like comics but do like both the written word and visual art can like them if they understand how to read them. So that is my response to that one question from the C tag. Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.